Welcome back to Physical Chemistry on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous video, we discussed the derivation of both the Clapeyron equation and the Clausius Clapeyron equation, which comes from the prior. Now we're actually going to use the Clausius Clapeyron equation shown right here to actually work an example problem so you can see what it's used for. But before we do that, let's just recall uh, one major thing about the Clausius-Clapeyron equation. Remember that the Clausius-Clapeyron equation generally is going to be used when we're on this boundary, okay, between two phases which are going to happen to be liquids and vapors, okay. Um, and remember vapors, or gases we could say, have an undefined volume. The volume is not an intrinsic property of the gas itself. And so when we deal with gases, we can't just simply use this change in molar volume that we had in the Clapeyron equation. Rather, we're going to have to use the pressure of the gas, and so that's going to require this equation, which has been solved, and so we can now explicitly plug things in and solve uh, for whatever we need to. All right, so again, here's our classius Clapeyron equation. The natural log of P2 over P1 is equal to negative the molar enthalpy of vaporization divided by R times the quantity 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. And we want to do two things. We want to calculate the enthalpy of vaporization. That's generally what this is going to be used for. And then calculate the entropy of vaporization. So let's look at our problem. All right, so the normal boiling point of benzene is 353.2 Kelvin. And the vapor pressure of liquid benzene is 1.19 times 10 to the fourth pascals at 20 degrees Celsius. Now this is obviously going to be one equation where we're going to have to convert the Celsius quantities to Kelvin. And then the enthalpy of fusion is 9.95 kilojoules per mole and the vapor pressure of solid benzene is 137 kilopascals at negative 44.3 degrees Celsius. All right, so I can go ahead and tell you a few things. One, we're not going to actually need um, some of the information in here. Okay, but let's think about this for a second. We're actually going to be solving first for the enthalpy of vaporization. So let's go ahead and rearrange the clausius clapeyron equation shown here to solve for delta H of vaporization, its molar version that is. So what, the, what we could do first of all is we can multiply both sides by negative R. Okay, if we multiply both sides by negative R, the negative R will end up on the left side and it will be gone from the right side. And then we can divide both sides through by this quantity, 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. And so that will give us the delta H of vaporization, or at least molar delta H, is equal to natural log of P2 over P1, that's a remainder from this side, divided by the quantity 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1, and then times negative R. All right, now that we have this clausius clapeyron equation solved for delta H of vaporization, what we really should do is think about the problem. In this sort of question, jumping in and plugging numbers in is a really bad idea. You need to first think about what the problem is asking. We're asked to calculate the enthalpy of vaporization. The key is the word vaporization. Remember the vaporization, back to general chemistry, is where you are vaporizing a liquid into a gas. So your initial state is a liquid, and your final state is the gas. That's the process of vaporization. So all of our initial states are ones, T1 and P1. Those would correspond to the liquid. Those are properties of the liquid since that's our initial state. The two quantities, T2 and P2, are our final states. Those would correspond to the gas, which is our final phase. Okay, So keep that in mind. Now we should probably worry about the pressures first. So let's think about what's P2 and P1. P1 is the pressure of the liquid and P2 is the pressure of the gas, okay? P1, what is P1? The pressure of the liquid. We don't, how do we have a pressure of a liquid? Well, when we're dealing with the pressure of a liquid, what we're typically gonna use is its vapor pressure, okay? And it gives us the vapor pressure. The vapor pressure of liquid benzene is 1.19 times 10 to the fourth pascals, all right? So I'm going to use that as pressure 1, and I plug that in right here, 1.19 times 10 to the 4th pascals. This is why it's very important to know what you're doing. Your initial state is liquid, so P1 would be the pressure of the liquid, and for liquids we're going to use the vapor pressure. All right. Now what's the pressure of the gas? Well, the normal boiling point of benzene is 353.2 Kelvin, and notice they don't really give us another pressure. Well. 
let's think about what normal boiling point is because a boiling point is a temperature, but at least where we are on the phase diagram, it's also gonna to correspond to a pressure because any temperature point on here has a corresponding pressure. We just don't normally think about that. So what does normal mean? Well, normal means we're at atmospheric pressure. So what they're saying here is the boiling point of benzene at atmospheric pressure is 353.2 Kelvin. So we know the pressure we're going to use is one atmosphere. The problem is, is that we already input something with units of pascals. Now, you've got one of two choices. Um, either you can... Uh, convert 1.19 times 10 to the fourth pascals to atmospheres and then just plug in one atmosphere on the top or we can recognize that one atmosphere and this is just something you have to look up or, re or re memorize one atmosphere is 101,325 pascals so this is going to be the pressure of the gas that I use okay because I'm vaporizing it and so once it actually vaporizes it's going to be at this pressure. So my P2 is going to be 101,325 pascals. So now I've plugged in both of my pressures. The P1 is the pressure of the liquid. I'm going to use a vapor pressure because, again, it's a liquid. We have to use vapor pressure. And the pressure of the gas, um, it'll either have to give that to you or something like normal boiling point. So normal is at atmospheric pressure, so one atmosphere, and then just put it in the correct units. Again, this is just a unit conversion. So my pressure units are taken care of. Now let's worry about temperature units, all right? So again, T1, that's the temperature of the liquid, all right? Well, does it give us the temperature of the liquid? Yes. The vapor pressure of liquid benzene is this at 20 degrees Celsius, okay? So when we're at a liquid, that's 0.1 on the phase diagram, that's our initial state. We just needed to convert 20 degrees Celsius into Kelvin. We do that by adding 273.15, and our T1, again right here, becomes 293.15 Kelvin. There's our T1, again, of the initial state, the liquid. Now for the gas. Now it does give us this, that's nice, because the normal boiling point of benzene is 353.2 Kelvin. Okay, so we're just going to the point on the diagram where we're vaporizing it, and that occurs at this temperature. So the gas initially is going to be at this temperature once it vaporizes. So our T2, our temperature of the gas, is 353.2 Kelvin. Now, technically, you have a number of R's that you can use. Okay, um, obviously, you've got a lot of different forms of the gas constant, but we're going to use one that uses joules, and the easiest one is 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. Okay. And again, we want it in joules because we're calculating an enthalpy of vaporization, so it would make sense to have joules per mole. All right, And I guarantee you that when you uh, multiply this out and all the units cancel, you would end up getting that the delta H of vaporization is 30,703 joules per mole. All right, This is your enthalpy of vaporization. Now, does it make sense? It's positive. Does that make sense? Well, yes, because we're having to put energy into the system, heat into the system, in order to vaporize it from a liquid into a gas. Okay, If we were going the reverse direction and going from a gas to a liquid, that would be condensation, then this would be exactly the same uh, number, but it would be opposite sign because you'd have to take energy out in order to cause it to cool down to into a and condense into a liquid. So this makes sense being positive. Now, in some cases, it may be appropriate to convert it into kilojoules per mole. Sometimes a professor might like this better. And considering I don't, I'd rather avoid scientific notation and to put three significant digits here because that's how many I have based on the problem. I could divide this number by 1,000 and my enthalpy of vaporization, that is molar enthalpy, will be 30.7 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so again, this is not really a super complicated problem, but you just have to think about what it is you're putting for what variable. Again, you could pretty easily flip these pressures or flip these temperatures if you're not careful. You have to know what the initial state is and what the final state. But assuming you understand that, the actual calculation is not difficult. Um, it may just require some algebraic manipulation. That's the first part of this question. The second part is to calculate the entropy of vaporization. So recall that if we were to take the uh, molar enthalpy, at least of vaporization, and divide it at the temperature at which that occurs, we would get the molar entropy of vaporization because S is H divided by T. 
Okay, and again, this is just one temperature because we're at the boiling point. That is the normal boiling point, the boiling point at atmospheric pressure, which happens to be 353.2 Kelvin. Okay, so if we take the molar enthalpy of vaporization that we just found, 30.7 kilojoules per mole, okay, and we divide it by 353.2 Kelvin, which is the temperature at which the vaporization occurs. Again, that's where the boiling point is then we actually get a decimal, but if we multiply by 1,000 to get it back to joule units, we get 86.9 joules per mole Kelvin. Okay. Now, if this were kilojoules per mole Kelvin, it would be, let's see, 1, 2, 3, it'd be 0 0.0869. I'd rather put it like this, so I went ahead and multiplied whatever I got here by 1,000, and we have 86.9 joules per mole Kelvin. And this number with the units is the entropy of vaporization. Okay, so some typical problems that you would have using the clausius clapeyron equation would be to determine the enthalpy of vaporization and or the entropy of vaporization, okay? But in order to calculate the entropy of vaporization, you actually have to first calculate the enthalpy of vaporization, which is why I put that first. This one comes first, and then the entropy comes next, all right? So, again, the major thing about this is just setting up the problem correctly, knowing where each variable goes. Is it the initial state or is it the final state? Initial temperature, final temperature, whatever. But again, the actual calculation is not that difficult. All right. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Um, we'll do some more phase diagram videos later on in this playlist. Thank you.